and it's going it's going to ask you to approve the recording. Is it approved? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we are going to do a relayed channeling session. The way that relayed channeling works is that rather than me going into a full trance and letting my guide speak through me, I am fully conscious the entire time. I am in a very, very light trance state which isn't really noticeable to anybody except me because I feel way more relaxed than usual. Um, but I'm fully conscious and I'm the one speaking, but the words that I'm speaking are not my words. They're the words that my guide gives me to speak. We're working with my guide, Piet Kayla, for this session. And Piet, I, I refer to Piet Kayla as a being of light because he tells me that words are just words and I get way too hung up on labels. So he will not give me a, a term to use for what type of being he is. He says being of light is sufficient and I should stop worrying about labels. <laughs> so um, in, in a relayed channeling, in in any type of channeling session with me, it is a conversation. It's not a monologue. So the, the client is asked to participate actively. And at times my guide will stop speaking so that the client has a chance to say something. Um, so we are ready to start whenever you are ready to ask your question because of free will, my guides will not tell me anything until a question is asked. So the first thing I'd like to say is thank you for doing this, for um, coming forward to speak to me and give me your wisdom. Um, I'd like to know if right off the bat you have any messages for me. You are very attuned to your intuition you're listening very clearly to it, which hasn't always been the case in your life because people have tried to dissuade you from doing so. There are still some times when your conscious mind trips you up a little bit. So the biggest thing that Piet Kela is asking you to remember is that even when your mind questions, even when other people doubt, your intuition is not going to steer you wrong. You do know the answers, even when you're not sure that you do. Okay, thank you. I um, am also wondering, I you know do an online business and curious about what direction I should head in. Um, let me just see if you have any thoughts that way. This is another case where the intuition is not steering you wrong. It's another case where, where you do know the answer, but it's not entirely accessible to you right now because you're, you're trying to think of the answer. Your intuition and your guides are nudging at you. They're sending you signs. They're sending you signals of the direction that you need to go that's going to be most beneficial, not only to you, but to your clients and to your guides. Your, your guides are already working with you, whether you are aware of it consciously or not. And you will begin working more closely with them and co-creating with them in your business and in your personal life as well. Okay. How do I get in touch with uh, my guides more and when I feel like my intuition is kind of quiet? With getting in touch with your guides, um, and th this is coming from Piet Kela, you, you do have um, a plan for connecting more solidly with your guides within the next week, I believe. Um, so that will help because once you have that conscious connection, 
you'll be able to access them more fully and they'll be able to speak to you more clearly. Okay. So that's as, as, as far as your intuition, when you feel like your intuition isn't giving you the answer, sometimes it's because your, your ego, your, your conscious mind is rejecting the answer it's hearing. So sometimes it isn't that your intuition has gone quiet. It's that part of your mind is saying, oh, no, that can't be right. Um, sometimes it's because there's too much noise, for want of a better word, in your mind. So the words from the information and input from your intuition is there, but you're thinking, you're wondering, you're questioning, you're planning your, your dinner, you're planning the conversation with your next client, and there's too many things happening in your mind at the same time, and the input from your intuition can't get through. So at those times... And especially when you really want to connect fully with your with your own intuition, it's best to take time in a quiet space. You don't necessarily have to full on meditate because sometimes the act of meditating becomes an engagement of the conscious mind. But just sitting quietly and letting the thoughts come without judging them because they're not actually thoughts they're they're your intuition giving you the information so just let it come into your mind without questioning without judging write it down so you can look at it later and decide what feels true for you okay that's helpful um in terms of my health which i've always struggled with do you have any insight or direction that way i really appreciate as, as the human speaking as the human for a moment i really appreciate you asking that question because it gives me um, the opportunity to remind people that channeling does give access to a lot of information but it is not a substitute for medical care and it is not intended to give diagnoses or medical or legal advice of any kind Mm -hmm. I would be highly unethical and would actually be breaking the law if I said otherwise. Um, as far as your health, you are, I, Piet Kale is telling me that you're having trouble getting at least one medical professional to listen to you when you try to tell them what's going on. Yeah. Um, you need to keep pushing and that pushing might be continuing to tell that professional, no, this is really what's going on. You have to listen to me, or it might be going over their head or finding a different, um, provider, but okay. you, you know, your body better than anybody because mm -hmm. you are the one who has lived in it your entire life. Mm-hmm. You are not wrong with what you believe is happening with you health-wise. Right. And it's imperative that you, it, it's hard to keep pushing. It's hard to fight against the professionals because they're the ones with the pieces of paper on their walls saying that they have the education. But it's imperative that you don't let that stop you from continuing to advocate for yourself until you find the care that you need. Okay, great. Um, can you talk to me about trauma in my life? And although I've done so much work, is that, or how is, of course, it's still impacting me. It's always still impacts people, but um, any thoughts or direction or um, anything that I might be missing? Just, I'm curious. The, the answer is along similar lines. Just as you know your body better than anybody, you know your mind better than anybody. You know your experiences, you know your life, you know the impacts that your past has had. Refrain from letting other people tell you how to heal. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's great to reach out to to people for advice and support, but always remember that they they can only speak from their own knowledge and experiences, mm -hmm. and what they say may not be correct for you. Right. You have you you have found healing paths that work well for you. Mm -hmm. And you have tried some that haven't worked and you've been able to say, okay, it's not, it's not because of me that this isn't working. It's just that it's not a good fit. Mm -hmm. So continue looking at it from that angle. Okay. And also remember that thing, things that worked for you previously in your healing journey may no longer work for you. Mm -hmm. you're you're growing and you're progressing and you're going to outgrow some of the things that have served you in the past right so remember to let go of things when they're no longer serving you mm -hmm. um i keep coming back to my intuition i think that i'm highly intuitive about so many things i think that mostly i'm highly intuitive about other people um when it comes to me and i i totally understand mixing the intellectual up with that mm -hmm. um having so many responsibilities um and kind of deciphering you know trying to figure out which is being impulsive and 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 what is actual intuition it seems like the more well the more responsibilities i have the more new things that are going on the harder it is to tease that out because my, i have so many feelings right about mm -hmm. about all the things and so i think where it gets confusing for me when i'm in this place in life which happens right this is how life goes yeah. um kind of teasing out between feelings and intuition is where i get stuck um at, at this kind of a juncture where there's just a lot happening and a lot of decisions to be made um i'm i'm pretty good at following my intuition most times until I seem to be in a tangle of many things and many possibilities. The times when you're feeling tangled are the times when it's going to best serve you to set aside time to be quiet and just let the information come, write it all down. Don't question whether it's intuition or emotion or some of both or neither. Write down whatever comes into your mind and then afterward, take a look at it, not with an analytical eye, but with lis listening to your gut for want of a better term. When you see written down, do this how does that feel in your body how does it feel in your mind it's a longer process than just being able to say okay intuition tell me what to do and getting an answer but it's the process that's going to best serve you because there are those times when everything everything's swirling in your mind and trying to get hold of of one answer out of the 5000 things isn't always possible Mm -hmm. It's also, it also may serve you well, if this isn't something that you're already doing to set aside time like that for yourself once a week mm -hmm. and just take the time to be quiet, take the time to not think about work, to not think at all and just see what comes up for you, see what comes to you. Okay. So kind of a, a period of letting go. Mm -hmm. Almost an almost a period of meditation, but again, not exactly meditation. Because you're because when you meditate, you are doing something. Mm -hmm. And this wants to be a time when you're not doing anything other than writing down what comes to you. Okay, so maybe like automatic writing? Or no? In a set it 
Not exactly automatic writing, because automatic writing generally is channeled writing. Right. And you're not going to be channeling this. This isn't going to be a conversation between you and your guides. This is going to be a conversation between you and you. Okay. So this is a time to connect more fully with yourself. Because as you deepen that connection with yourself, that's going to help with the, with the healing journey. That's going to help with getting in touch with your intuition. And that's going to help with the next st stages of your business. Because this is a tool that you have the potential to learn to use for yourself and to teach to others. Right. And I, I actually do use that. So, um, and I've been so busy, I haven't been. So that's, it's a good reminder. Um, how about relationships? As I've just moved to a new area again, I move a lot. And um Building new relationships at my age is is much just much harder. It's just harder, mm -hmm. um, and so people are already very involved in their lives, and they have their you know everything kind of all set in stone. So I'm just curious about any thoughts on that. The first and most important step is to determine what types of relationships you want. And that's not a question for you to answer right now. It's something for you to, to keep in mind. But what types of re relationships do you want? What types of people do you want to bring into your life? And then where might those people be? It's almost like finding clients for your business. Only instead of who is your ideal client and where would they be, it's who is your ideal person? Okay. Look, look in your area for groups of um, metaphysical, holistic workers, energy workers, practitioners. Look for stores and wellness centers that offer the types of services that you're interested in. Take classes if you are able to. Those are going to bring you into proximity with the people who are most aligned to become part of your personal life. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, the only other thing I can think of is, and I know you don't do speaking to people of past, but my mother passed recently. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually in her home, in her bedroom. I'm staying in her bedroom. Um, any thoughts at all about that or any guidance in terms of I still feel great sadness I didn't get to spend time with her she died during COVID um, etc and I'm okay with the sadness I'm okay with grief um, I'm totally okay with that but I wish I could hear from her somehow um, and I know again you don't do that but I just would like any thoughts on that she is there because she is everywhere. When a human, when a human passes, it's it's the physical form that passes. Right. The the soul, the spirit is still there. Mm -hmm. And although the likelihood is that your mother has long since crossed over, part of her consciousness remains with you. Part of her consciousness remains in the physical location where she spent most of her time. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so you can, you can speak to her. You may not be able to hear her respond, but you can speak to her at any time. And it might be beneficial to you to say to her what you would have said if you had been able to be with her at the end. Yeah, I actually do that all the time. Um, why not, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just curious. But it's nice to know that part of her consciousness remains here where she spent most of her life. And also, you know, you're, you're grieving, but 
there may be some guilt as well for not being able to be with her, even though it was beyond your control. It wasn't your yeah. choice to not be there. Right. And letting go of guilt is one of the most difficult tasks for humans. But in this case, it isn't serving you and it's compounding the grief because not only are you grieving her loss, but you're grieving the actions you d weren't able to take. Yeah. So processing the guilt and um, coming to a point of accepting that it wasn't your fault and it wasn't your choice and your mother knows that. Okay. That that will help. Okay. Okay. Um, I think, I think that's all I have. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have. Okay. I really appreciate you taking the time to have this with me and I'm going to stop the recording. And then if you want, if you have any like clarifications or, um, processing, we can do that. Okay. Thanks. I'm stopping the recording now.